Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Dorian, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, I'm writing to you with the hopes that you can create a video to address a problem that my friend is currently facing. And let's call him James. James is a nice guy who's working to adopt the red pill way of thinking. But every so often a very attractive and treacherous woman will get his attention. And he'll begin to act like a blue pill in the belief that by treating her the way that she wants him to, he'll be able to hold on to her. He's even been trying to think of all of life's problems in terms of red pills versus blue pills. There's also an individual who James and I both know, who dropped out of university and has recently been talking ill of James, who told James that if he ever sees him again, he will publicly humiliate him. Although this is a strange threat, James is trying to figure out what the MGTOW connotations are, especially because girls are aware of these obscure threats that have been made towards him and he fears that these threats will lower his status in the eyes of women. How should he respond to these threats in order to preserve a red pill mantra, Sandman? Well, Dorian, thanks for your comments and questions. Part of taking the red pill is to understand not only female nature, but also male nature as well. Blue pill men usually threaten other men to show off their male bravado to women, and to gain attention from those same women while silencing and squashing male competition that's found all around them. But a red pill man doesn't care what blue pill men, nor women, think of him. He's basically red pill all the way. And he's secure in his mindset because he understands that the majority of conflicts in our society are started by people jockeying for a position for the mating game. And most human mating rituals are done subconsciously, which means that people often end up with really bad matches. A red pill man doesn't really care about status, at least on a conscious level. So Dorian, your friend James, needs to let go of what other people think of him and just ignore it and follow his own path. With regards to a general red pill path or mantra, I learned about something very important yesterday called sex transmutation that can aid most men on the red pill path and it's extremely valuable. There's a writer in the early 20th century called Napoleon Hill and he wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich and he went out of his way to study the habits of some of the most successful men in the world at that time and wrote a book to show everyone else how powerful their ideas were. He wanted to write this book to help others follow a recipe for success. And these ideas were so powerful that according to legend, before he published his book, the men that shared these secrets with him actually forced him to remove half the content from the book because too much of it was actually good enough to create competition for them. I don't know if I believe the urban legend surrounding this book, but regardless there are many valuable pieces of information that remain in this book that level 3 and level 4 MGTOWs can use to help them channel their frustrations into creative endeavors. According to Napoleon Hill, a man can turn into a genius and bring about untold riches if he basically follows what the book says. And what I'm going to talk about also ties into this idea of no fap that many listeners have been wanting me to talk about for quite some time. Many of you have been saying that men channeling our sexual energy into creative avenues actually improves our health and improves our lives. And according to Napoleon Hill, in the 11th chapter of his book, channeling that energy can actually make a man highly successful. He also says that the subconscious mind is the key to creation. With regards to myself, here on my YouTube channel I don't create my videos using my conscious mind. For roughly the entire last year I've been creating my presentations here by using my subconscious thoughts. I wake up each and every single day with no plan about what I'm going to talk about and I never try to consciously speak about issues facing men going their own way. Everything I say is channeled through my subconscious mind, and the intuitive learning that's found through it. And according to Hill as well as many others, celibacy or channeling that sexual energy is often a key to financial success, creative imagination, and developing new ideas. In my own experience, the greatest ideas that I've ever had came when I was single. And then when I got into relationships, the source for those great ideas seemed to vanish. In the past, I would come up with business ideas while I was still single. And then when I got into a relationship, I would use that idea and coast on it. And it only seemed that between relationships, I actually had great inspirations. For most men, if they take the energy they would normally put into women and put it into themselves, they're often more capable than they can imagine. And that's what I've learned over the last two years. When I wasn't in a relationship in the past, I felt great anxiety. But now I have no more anxiety being single because I have a creative outlet for my primal energy. And the only thing holding me back is the number of hours in the day. I have boundless amounts of energy to work and create and explore the world as well as myself. When I had sexual fulfillment in my past relationships, I would often grow sluggish and uninspired. 
And according to Napoleon Hill, most men waste their vital energy on women before they hit 40. And he also says that it's rare for men to truly succeed before we hit the age of 40, because we often don't learn to channel our emotions for constructive purposes. After reading his work, I believe that the red pill man should take his sexual frustration and energy and in turn it into sexual transmutation. He needs to use his new MGTOW mindset and use it to fuel his passions, instead of the desire to chase and please women. Great examples of men that use sexual transmutation include the Wright brothers, Nikola Tesla, and Sir Isaac Newton. All four men were single and never married, and I strongly believe they channel their emotional and sexual energy into their mental and creative passions, instead of physical expressions. And according to Napoleon Hill, sex expression is the most powerful form of energy in human life. And I believe that sex energy that is converted into mental energy and genius is part of our biology. A man that's interested in pairing up with women around him but instead avoids this impulse and channels his energy into his mind can achieve great things. This in turn attracts more women to him, more than before, because he's now able to provide greater resources to women. The subconscious mind fights to procreate, and if women love what men do for them instead of loving them for who they are, then the mind achieves everything it can to attract increasingly more attractive-looking females. Because for the most part, it's the highly attractive females that go after the wealthy men and pair bond with them. And the more a man achieves, the more of these types of women he actually attracts. Dorian, if red pill men want to be free of tacky blue pill men trying to oppress him, as well as women trying to subjugate him, he needs to use sexual transmutation to channel his energy towards things that are creative. With regards to myself, last year I was inspired by one woman, almost to the point of madness. But instead of pursuing her, I channeled my feelings into my work, and that's also one of the handful of reasons that I created this YouTube channel. I agree with Napoleon Hill about our primal energy being channeled into constructive behaviors. But you should also know that Napoleon Hill was also really a blue pill mangina when it comes to relationships. He understood that men were more powerful when they were motivated by sex, but he also had this to say which makes him sound like he didn't know the negative influence of women in men's lives. If good taste would permit, we might easily mention scores of men, well known to the American people, who climbed to great heights of achievement under the stimulating influence of their wives, only to drop back to destruction after money and power went to their heads, and they put aside the old wife for a new one. And what I believe he's actually saying here is that once a man no longer focuses on his attraction to women in his life, and instead focuses on money and power, this leads to his destruction. On the contrary, I believe the exact opposite. Sure, there have been many successful men in the past with regards to history, but I believe that the most successful men, like Nikola Tesla and Sir Isaac Newton, were never married. They achieved success and developed their ideas to an almost superhuman level. And they most likely did this because they were single in the first place. They most certainly felt the pull of women in their lives. And Tesla always regretted never getting married. And Newton regretted never having sex and confessed that he was a virgin on his deathbed. But I believe that both men took this frustration from a lack of intimacy and channeled it to even higher heights because their single lives drove them to excel to the point that almost caused them to self-destruct and fall into madness. Another god among MGTOW which I'll be covering in the future includes an Islamic polymath and philosopher called Al-Hazan and he lived during the Islamic Golden Age. He was also the Tesla of his day trying to control the flow of the River Nile and harness its power for industry. And he also invented the Camera Obscura and figured out how optics and light work. And he even invented the scientific method. His greatest discoveries were made when he wrote his famous book on optics from 1011 AD to 1021 AD. He was under house arrest and alone for 10 years where he worked on one of the greatest scientific discoveries of all time and with no women around to distract him. His work was probably the only thing that saved him from madness from his own desires to mate. And I think that the greatest men in history often channel their urge for intimacy into their work. They accept it for what it is, but they also pursue knowledge as a bandage to cover the wound of not fulfilling their biological role to procreate. Anyways, getting back to your friend Dorian, James needs to stop listening to what other people are saying and follow his own path. And he needs to learn how to control his own desire for the approval of others. Instead, he needs to stop listening to what others are saying and focus on his own desires instead of trying to please everyone else. He comes first, after all, and if others threaten to embarrass him, he should just ignore these threats instead of giving away all of his attention to them. And the guy threatening him is just making him paranoid, so he needs to just ignore all of it. Hope that helps you, Dorian, as well as James, and thanks again for making your donation. As for everyone else, please like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter and get tomorrow's video today. 
Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. So enjoy the rest of your day and cheers.